With Apple's mixed reality headset getting closer and closer, I think it's time we start getting more familiar with all the tools at our disposal. Apple has done a great job so far building utilities and APIs that make the whole 3D content creation a great experience, not just for developers, but for 3D artists too. For example, we have the Reality Kit and Room Plan that make 3D asset creation a piece of cake. But we also have Quick Look, an easy way to preview 3D assets pretty much everywhere in iOS and macOS. And last but not least, USDZ, Reality Converter, and Reality Composer. If you don't know what any of that means, don't worry. That's what this video is about. Let's go! I've covered photogrammetry and room plan extensively in lots of other videos, so if you want to learn more about that, I'll have some links in the description below. In this video, I want to focus more on USDZ, Apple's 3D format of choice, and Reality Composer, Apple's prototyping tool for AR experiences. Think of USDZ as a folder that contains every little thing you might need for an AR experience. It's like a turbocharged FBX file. With FBX, we can store the geometry of our object, material information, and animation data. But that's a tiny fraction of what is needed for AR. USDZ allows Apple to package a ton more information like spatial audio, anchoring, and much more. And it packs all that into one single file that can be easily distributed. So USDZ is at the center of Apple's 3D pipeline. So if we want to use USDZ, how do we go about creating it? It's a little bit more complicated than you might think, so let's go through things step by step. There are mainly two ways. The first one is using a 3D application like Cinema 4D, and the second one is Apple's Reality Converter, a small utility that handles everything for us. The dedicated 3D application might sound like the better choice, but that's actually not the case. Let me show you what I mean. Exporting from Cinema is as simple as going to the Export menu and picking the USD format. Just make sure that the zipped option is enabled. But we have a couple of issues here. There's no way for us to control the model's file size when it comes to textures. And we also cannot export animation data. And we have to have a way to adjust both if we're going to prepare assets for AR. Let's start with the texturing issue first. The model is already optimized for USDZ, the mesh is light, and the textures are not bigger than 4K. They're also in a format USDZ likes, PNG and JPEG. Ignore the EXR displacement map, we're not going to use that at all. So with our textures optimized, one would assume that we don't have to go through the baking process. There's no reason to convert our textures twice. But if we don't do that and we just hit export, the resulting file won't have any textures at all. So we're forced to go through the baking process even though there's no need for it. In any other case, if we used for example 8K TIFF files, the baking process would be very helpful. But for models that are already optimized, well, good luck with that. <laughs> but even if we wanted to bake the textures again, Cinema's exporting dialog doesn't offer us any way to control the JPEG quality, similar to what we can do in the picture viewer. We can only change the resolution, the bit depth, and the format. And when we're talking about assets that can be distributed even through a simple iMessage, we have to have some way to control the asset's size. But Let's disregard these issues for now and let's export the object with a new set of materials. Our object now loads as expected, but notice the file size. It's more than 30 megabytes. The original maps were around 17 megabytes. Let's now check Reality Converter. The app is super simple. Currently, it doesn't support C4D files, so we're going to have to export the geometry to a different format. OBJ will do. Once we drag the file into the app, we get a couple more options. We're going to populate the diffuse, normal, and roughness channels with the textures we already have. And while we're at it, let's also add an AO map. It's not going to break the bank, it's just 800 kilobytes. Okay, now let's export our object. Just as a reminder, our textures are a little bit over 17 megabytes in size. We could further lower the resolution and the JPEG quality, but I would say this is a good middle ground. 
Now, let's compare the two files, 17 megabytes for Reality Converter and 34 for Cinema. That is quite a difference. This size difference alone will have a huge impact on the app's loading time and performance. Keep in mind that an app won't just have a single object to work with, so Cinema's exporting dialog not having a way to control texture size is a serious omission. Reality Converter, on the other hand, is smart enough to just leave the textures alone and not rebake them. So I would say if you want to export a USDZ file and you want to maintain the optimizations you've already done, always pick Reality Converter. If you're not on a Mac, unfortunately you have to rely on the exporting options of your 3D app. Now if we want to preview our asset on the iPhone or the iPad, it's just a matter of sending it over. We can airdrop it, use email, messages, there's a lot of different ways. I'll just use iCloud. Now let's see how our asset looks. We just have to navigate to that location, select the object, and Quick Look automatically pops up. It's that easy. Quick Look respects the original size of the object, so if we build everything to scale, our object is going to fit really well into the environment. But if we want to, we can also adjust the size accordingly. We also have the option to preview the asset without using AR at all. I don't know about you, but I find this incredibly cool. I love how easy it is to test things out. Now let's see how we can bring in animation data. I've set up this simple animation inside Cinema. If you recall, Cinema won't let us export animation in USDC, so we're gonna have to find our workaround. And that workaround is FBX. So let's pick the FBX option, and let's make sure we have PLA to Vertex Cache enabled. Otherwise, the specific animation we're using on the scene won't export at all. Okay, so far so good. Now with our animation exported, let's go back to Reality Converter and use that to create the USDZ file. The app detects the animation data and displays two more buttons, a play and stop. Let's hit play to ensure our animation loads correctly, and it all looks good. Now let's hit export and save to iCloud. As you can see, we have to rely on Reality Converter quite a lot. Unfortunately, I haven't found another way to do these things on third-party applications, but I haven't tested out all of them, so there might be some application that can do all that. But as far as Cinema 4D goes, the USDZ exporting options are very limited. Okay, so we have all of our objects exported. Now let's see how we can start building an AR experience. To do that, we're going to use Reality Composer. Think of Reality Composer as a prototyping tool. We cannot build a final application with it, but we can definitely test things out. Reality Composer is available on all devices, iPhone, iPad, and desktop, so you can pick whatever device suits you best. Let's start by creating a new project. The app gives us a few options to choose from, and these have to do with how our content is going to be anchored into the real environment. Is it going to be tracked on a horizontal surface, like a table, or a vertical one, like a wall? We can also choose to anchor our AR experience on an image, like a book cover. We can also use face tracking. There's a lot of options here. Let's go with the horizontal anchoring. The scene by default comes with two objects already there, but we're going to add our own. Let's do that. I'm going to hit replace. And as you can see, we have a lot of different assets to choose from. We can pick from Apple's existing content library, but we want to use our own. So let's start importing. I'm going to pick the brick and the cement piece. By the way, these are some of the new assets I'm working on. So expect a new collection sometime in the future. Let's add the brick into the scene and let's get rid of the select to edit object. The app has some great ways to move the object around, so I'm going to use the widget to move the brick closer to the ground. Awesome. Let's now add the cement piece. Now that we have our scene ready, we can pick each object and add a specific action. So let's pick the brick and add a new behavior. There are several different preset behaviors to choose from, but we can also create our own. For now, let's pick the tap and flip. The app has really nice little default animations, so even if our asset doesn't come with animation data, we can easily add some life into the scene. We can further adjust the effect and the timing, but let's go with something simple. Perfect. 
Now let's add another behavior to the cement object. We're going to go with the add force option. Let's adjust the velocity a little bit and hit preview. Now let's see how things look in AR. If we tap on the brick, the small animation will begin. And if we hit the cement, the dynamics will kick into gear. We can also have the objects interact with each other. So let's go to the brick and change the behavior. We'll delete the old one and add the force behavior. I'm going to move it also a little bit closer to the cement piece. And let's try it out. Now the pieces interact with each other. That's really cool. But we're not just limited to simple interactions. We can create more complex scenarios by adding multiple scenes that will load once a specific condition is met. Let's create a new scene, and for now, let's stick with the defaults. Now let's go to the first scene and change the behavior for the brick. We're gonna create a new custom behavior that says, when we tap on the brick, go to the next scene. Let's try it out. Awesome. As you can see, there's great potential here. If we can put some time into it, we can create some really awesome experiences. Now, let me show you how we can trigger animations. Let's create a new project and add the planet's asset. What I want to do here is start the animation once I tap on the two planets. So let's add a custom behavior and have the trigger be on tap. And now let's add the action. Let's pick the USD animation. And here we can choose how many times it will play back. Let's do three. And now let's see how things look. If we tap on the object, the animation will start playing back. It will repeat for three times, and then it will stop. Awesome! Let me now show you another simple example. The idea here is to have an app that can quickly give us the IMDb rating of a movie just by scanning the movie cover. So we don't have to do this constant IMDb searching as we're going through a library. The rating will just show up right on the cover. Of course, that will be a huge undertaking from a development standpoint, but it's still nice to experiment with different ideas. Even though we only messed around with the super simple examples, I think it's clear how powerful Reality Composer can be. So if someone's serious enough, they can create some really great stuff. Just experimenting with all the different tools available makes the wait for Apple's headset even more difficult. I think it's going to be an amazing device, and I think it will also be a great business opportunity for content creators around the world. So I would say if you're even remotely interested in this field, go get yourself a really cheap iPad or iPhone and start experimenting. You won't regret it. It's a lot of fun. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below, and I'll do my best to answer them. Take care, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.